Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a good morning. Hello, Larry. As always, let me know if you can hear me fine. Hey, Mushroom. Hey, Andy Lynn. Ah, uh, yes. This is where I was. <coughs> um. Hello, Nemo. Perfect time I just pulled into work. <laughs> Why is that perfect timing? <laughs> I have not done the Volcano Manor uh, dungeon. We should probably do that before we do anything else. To listen, duh. <laughs> Back when I worked a uh, office job, I had a nice Bluetooth headset thingy. Not headset, like Bluetooth earbuds that let me stealthily listen to things when I, when I wasn't supposed to. And I had long hair, so I could hide <laughs> what I was doing with my hair. Hello, Antos. Damn, EDF sent you so much back in time that you ended up in the Middle Ages with magic. I'd play an EDF set in the Middle Ages with magic. I sure would. You had a job before YouTube? I did. Hello, Bilbo. Good morning, Lucky. Armveld, hello. I'm a package handler at FedEx. I usually do music or podcasts while I'm here. That sounds fun. I, I think um, jobs that let you focus your mind on something else are actually like the some of the best jobs because it's it's you can multitask and actually do things that you actually care about. I once had a very nice menial job where <clears throat> I was basically just carrying stuff around, basically. For the most part, it was all physical work. And so I would be able to listen to audiobooks while I was working and nobody nobody gave a shit. It was a, it was a lonely job. That was actually one of the best jobs I ever had because I didn't have to... Um, I wasn't really there. I was listening to audiobooks. Hello, Samad. Magic is OP? Yes. But um on my on my carrion mage build I stick to the sword sorcery magic. It's still pretty strong, but it's not, you know, common as your level. trying to 1v1. I mean, I'll I'll 1v1 you if you want to play if you want to 1v1. <laughs> My build's not completely done, but I'll I'll definitely play anybody that wants to. I'm on PlayStation though, so if you're not playing on PlayStation, you're out of luck. 
Don't you need the other staff for the sword magic? I really hope not. I think this is the right one. No, this is the right one. Enhances carrying sword sorceries. Oh, on my PC. Dang. You got lucky. <laughs> Average Elden Ring enjoyer. <laughs> What's my level? I'll check in a second. What types of audiobooks do I listen to? Uh, Nonfiction science books is a lot of what I like, especially about biology. Um, but recently I've been reading Lord of the Rings. I'm now on the Two Towers, listening to it. Uh, my level is at 106. So I'm still a bit from where I need to be to be at dueling level. You should give the Similarian a shot eventually. I probably will. I've enjoyed what I've read of the Lord of the Rings. It reads like an old religious text. <laughs> A lot of classical literature reads like that. I'm, I'm already fond of classical literature, so it's not a hard sell for me. Maybe I'll try a Beast Cleric build after the DLC I have dropped. For now, I want to finish the last trophy I need. If I was going to do any other build other than this build um, for the DLC, because I really like carry and magic, that's, that's, this is going to be my build. But if I was going to do any other build, I'd be a Crucible Knight. I'd, I'd cosplay as a Crucible Knight and get the, uh, you know, the, the Strength, Faith, Talisman. Because they have the Crucible Knight wings in there, confirmed, and you also have the Crucible Knight Porcupine Quills. So we've, we have confirmed a bunch of Crucible stuff. I would be a Crucible Knight, for sure. Hello, Catan. Good morning. I have a few builds that I'm excited, but most excited about being a Knight of Galmir. Gel Interesting. That's an unusual one. No! Stop it. I'm mostly excited for the new lore. That is among the things I am excited I, I, uh, I'm lucky to be the kind of fella that enjoys... Elden Rings and Dark, and you know, from software stuff in general, in all of its many aspects. I think some people are unfortunate enough to only like specific things about it, and will just kind of ignore the rest, which is perfectly fine. It's designed for you to be able to do that. Uh, but as for me, I like the PvP, the the lore, the the level design, the bosses. Hmm. I was really hoping I, it would, like, spawn on top of him. Uh, it kind of worked. 
Worked a little. Have I played the Otogi games by From Software? No, but I've heard a lot about them. I will eventually go through a lot more of From Software's catalog. <clears throat> I might go on stream through Kingsfield 4. Maybe not the whole thing, but uh, enough to collect some footage because I do want to make a video on it since I think it's so good. And I'm, I'm playing through Shadow Trial of Briss, Abyss, so I might restart that and play that on stream before the DLC comes out. PvP, oh well, maybe a fair 1v1, but most of the time it's only ganking. Uh, it depends on what you mean by ganking. Like if I'm invading and they're going through the level and I'm fighting them, that's, that's the only kind of... That's really the... Like, I'll, I'll enjoy a duel, but that's what I want. I want to get ganged up by people that are going through the level. Not by people that are, you know, have cleared out all the enemies and have no interest in going through the level and are just summoning people to get ganked. That's not the same thing. People that are going naturally through the level, I invade, they they try and get me, I, I harass them, I kill maybe one of them, I use the enemies to my advantage. That's what I like. Stuck between continuing my Dark Souls 2 playthrough and starting another Elden Ring character on this dreary, rainy day. Have you finished Dark Souls 2? If you haven't finished it before, then I would say finish it. And if you have finished it before, I would say get your get your DLC characters ready because it's coming. <laughs> and you don't want to be burned out by the time it gets here. This spell sucks. If it doesn't spawn ab above, what's the point? This spell is, like, literally the worst. Larry says, I never enjoyed being the invader, but I always had fun being invaded. You don't know how common that sentiment is. Um, a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people feel that way. I think the majority of... I've heard it so often at this point, I'm fully in the belief that most people are like that. I'm sure you get lore questions, but what's your interpretation of those who live in death ending? So I talked about this in a previous stream. I figured it out after talking to Crunchy, or after talking to to, to um, people. Uh, what I think those that live in death are, are similar to how the Golden Order views crucible people. So the dialogue with Fia says that the that the that those who live in death are the meek in the many. All right, so they're low, they're lowly. And then dialogue with Roger says that they're in that position for reasons that aren't their fault. There's a flaw in the golden order and that's why they're the way they are. And so it's not their fault that they live in death. So we have those two pieces of context. So what I think is that those that live in death represent losers, um, society's losers. They live in death, you know. Um, and the fact that they're losers means there's something that outside of their control. Like, Roger made it very clear. It's not their fault that they're the way they are. Uh, that means there's something wrong with the society. That means there's something wrong with the established order. Because the established order failed them. But when, when, the, society um, when the society purports to be perfect and eternal, which the Golden Order does, it, it claims to be perfect. It claims to be perfect and eternal. That means that anyone that isn't having a good time in the society has something wrong with them. Okay? So if you are among the meek and the many, if there is something wrong with, with your life uh, outside of your control, then you have to be demonized and say, no, it's your fault. You're like this for your own reasons, and so you're a heretic. You're, you're a heretic because you, you, your life is, you're a victim in a world that shouldn't have victims. 
So that's what I think. Um, that's what I think is going on with that. <clears throat> Wouldn't this happen in almost every society? Um, there would be losers in every society, and there would be people that, but and there would also be people that fail through no fault of their own in every society. But not every society claims to be perfect. That's the problem with this issue. The Golden Order is is claiming to be perfect and eternal. And when you claim to be perfect and eternal, if you have if you have people that are failing, then you have to blame the people. Because, because it would be sacrilege to blame yourself. I think gold mask helps us in rotation. Yes, yes. Like all this, this is the same thing with the crucible. The crucible people are are persecuted for the same reason, and the the dung eater ending. So I talked about the flame of frenzy in a previous video. You guys may have seen that one. And the flame of reverency represents the idea that life is so terrible that that everyone should die. You should really see that video. It's one of my favorites that I made, uh, the lore video for the flame of frenzy. But the dung eater is a little different. The dung eater is more like the established golden order is bad, and I want revenge on everyone. You know, I want revenge on on everything, and everyone should be cursed. An endless cycle of of curses. So when he defiles something, he he taints it. And so these people and their children and their children's children all are tainted. Um, and I think you can think of that defilement as almost literal. Uh, like like when you wrong someone and and do great harm to them, they're literally you can you can damage them in a way where they're they're unhealthy, like mentally unhealthy. You can break people, and their damage can be passed on to their children if they have children. Uh, you know, they, they can become abusive. They can become... Oh, here's here's a nice statistic. Uh, most bullies have been bullied. So, so take it, so take it like that. Most people that, that, um, most people that bullied other people in childhood were bullied themselves when they were younger. And then when they got, you know, bigger, they, they bullied other smaller children. So that's, take it along those lines. <laughs> um, that's what the dung eater's trying to get. Revenge. Uh, that's what he wants. He doesn't just want... Oh, life's so bad, everyone should die. No, no, that's the flame of frenzy. The dung eater specifically uh, wants revenge for the for the way that life is. The Dung Eater ending is starting a cycle of abuse out in the world and everyone in it. Yes. I have suffered and so everyone should suffer all the time, forever. Why is Radagon upset about his red hair? Uh, I would recommend you go to the stream where I talk to Kanshi. I think that stream has... has um, Timestamps. They're not made by me. They were made by YouTube, so they're not exactly. Maybe they're not complete, completely accurate. Excuse me. Um, but Crunchy talks about Radigan in an interesting way, and I talk about what I think about that. And I think I would do a better job explaining it there than I did here. I wish the endings were more than implications and different tree colors. I'm not sure what they could do. To the endings that would satisfy though uh because it's an ending like an, an ending is literally just a cutscene there's there's nothing there's nothing they could like i i could see maybe having a nicer cutscene kind of like the flame of frenzy and uh ronnie the the elden ring endings where you restore the ending ring where you mend it those are kind of lackluster in comparison, but really the best you could do is something like the Flame of Frenzy or Ronnie's ending, have a different cutscene for each of them that shows their importance. I guess I would have to be some kind of post game, right? Right, and that that's not an ending then. If there's if there's a post game, like as for endings, I think they're fine. 
I do kind of agree with you that they should have been a little more distinct and shown a slightly better cutscene. So Dung Eater is kind of like Syndrome? Yes, a little bit. But then again, with the Flame of Frenzy, you could view it from the point of view of the Tarnished. Life has never shown them mercy or cared about them, so why should they care? Yeah, but the Flame of Frenzy doesn't look at it from that, that perspective. Because the Flame of Frenzy has a well-developed ideology that you talk to with the Grape Girl. The, um, I don't remember her name. Um, the Shaburi Grape Lady. She talks about what they're doing and why they're doing it. And it's specifically simply because the variety of life, the differentiation of life, the fractures and the births and the souls are the source of all the suffering. That's the source of all of it. And all of the followers of the Flame of Frenzy are bent back, doubled in pain. So they're trying to make it all stop, melt it all away. <laughs> Hayata, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> And, um, Yuria, no, not Yuria, uh, Yura, Yura the, the hunter, he doesn't get possessed by, his body doesn't get possessed until after he has suffered greatly. It's nihilism and antinatalism, I think. Well, it's not nihilism. That's that. Uh, it is antinatalism, but I don't like to use the term antinatalism because the concept, the concept that life is so terrible that it's not worth living, predates the word antinatalist and the people that popularize that word. So I don't. I don't like to use that. I. I will just do the long hand and just say uh, the idea that life is not worth living because of the suffering. <laughs> and maybe that's a little inelegant, but I don't want to just say antinatalist because if I say it, I'll have to explain what it means anyway. And it's not necessarily antinatalist because the concept doesn't necessarily originate from the people that, that popularize the word. Uh... Where is this? This is the Volcano Manor. Ooh, ooh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm underestimating this guy. I gotta stop. Uh, Hayeda and, I, I do believe they're the same person, but I think they're the same person in the same way that, I think she's possessed. Like, I think she dies, and because she died and she suffered greatly, her body gets possessed the same way that Yura does. You know how Yura, he, he tries to get the woman that he fell in love with and save her, and she kills him, and he dies, and then after that, Shabriri is able to control his dead body and act through it. And that's the same thing with uh, Hayeta. Hayeta, I think the same thing happens with her, where Irina dies and she suffers greatly, and then Hayeta is some kind of spirit of the frenzied flame, same as Shabriri, and takes possession of her body. That's why they're connected. What happened with the Turtles in Moonlight Altar? Okay, I blame Bilbo for that. Because I'm sure, I went back and looked at that, <laughs> I'm sure I would have figured it out if Bilbo had not said that the Turtles were around the tower. Like, first of all, people shouldn't be spoiling things anyway. I, I know that I've already done it. I know that I've played through the game already and I've already done the Turtle thing, but I had forgot. I had forgar. So, uh, but if he hadn't said that, I wouldn't have stuck around the tower for as long <laughs> and, and given up. 
Uh, but no, I didn't get them. I'll get them later. <laughs> Generally, it's okay, Bill. Do they forcibly take possession of the bodies? Yura said... Sorry, Shabriri said that Yura gave him permission. That he gave the body up. So, I'm going to assume that they became adherents of the Flame of Frenzy right before they died. Because they suffered so greatly. I'm going to assume that they don't do it without their permission. But there's, it could go either way. Like, you, you could interpret that any way you want. Shibura equals reputable source. Yeah, that's another, that's another thing. But the problem is, um, the people that call him a liar, the people that would know... See, I, I get it. Yeah, he's not a reputable source. But the people that call him a liar are also not reputable sources because they're the Golden Order. And they, um, hello, Gabriel. And they uh, are the ones that put Kale's people all down there, even though apparently they weren't worshipping the Flame of Frenzy, and at least Kale doesn't think so. So it, it's it's uh, two unreputable sources that are can't be trusted, and you have to just gonna have to pick, gonna have to decide. Ugh. Oh wow. I really didn't think that I would live. And I'm, another reason maybe you shouldn't take, th this is speculation, but one of the reasons maybe you shouldn't take Shabriri at face value is in the Flame of Frenzy ending, you can see you're not given a choice. Like, you're, you're not given a choice. You're in the thrall of the Flame of Frenzy. Once you, once you get gripped, uh, you can't choose any of the other endings. Um, so you don't have an option at that point anymore. And so they're not exactly about giving people choices. Because you don't get a choice of what ending you want to do once you're associated with them. And your character, like, falls to the ground and seems to die in that ending. So your character walks up to the to the Marika statue. Walks to Mikola's Lino? What is that? That doesn't have anything to do with what I'm saying. Uh, walks to the ground, dies there, and then he gets back up and his head is, you know, fire. He's Flame of Frenzy. Uh, and he walks weirdly. He walks around weirdly like he's really enjoying himself and enjoying seeing the, everything burn around him. Yes, I know the needle lets you undo it, but that doesn't have anything to do with what I'm saying. The fact that the needle d lets you undo it doesn't, doesn't, isn't related to what I'm talking about. Um, because that, it's not them willingly giving you a choice. They're not, they're not choosing type people. The Flame of Frenzy. So then, okay, you're walking around. You can't... It, it doesn't seem like it's your character anymore. Your character doesn't move like that in any other cutscene. I'm sure Shibari takes over the body of the player and is finally won against the Golden Order. I, I've always thought that that's it, because 
to take over bodies, this they seem to need them to die. You know, with if we if we assume that Shaburi took over Yura's body after he died, and Hayeta took over Irina's body after she died, then I think that once you're in the Flame of Frenzy and you don't have any way to combat the influence of the Outer God, your body gets taken over, and either that's Shaburi or 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 just the 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 Flame of Frenzy itself, the spirit of the Flame of Frenzy. I lean towards Shaburi. It doesn't seem like you. If it was you, why why did it have the cutscene of having you die, and have your head replaced with flame? Um, yeah, and and we have evidence of them not caring about your your choices. They don't care about what you want. Catan says, totally underrated to Elden Rings. Uh, Elden Ring made me underestimate lava so bad, I tried casually stepping over some in Demon Souls and got cooked. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dark Souls 1 was the same way. You couldn't really walk through lava unless you had the right ring. Are people still trying to justify the Flame of Frenzy ending? I don't justify it. It's obviously the wrong ending. It's a bad ending, uh, but it's very understandable. Like it's very under. It's a very, it's an almost logical choice. Um, if you saw my Flame of Frenzy video, I, I think that video explains the emotional reasoning behind it. Yes, may chaos take the world. Right. <laughs> Can I make that jump? That does not seem doable. You can still fix the broken golden order, but you can't fix life. And the problem isn't the golden order. The problem is life. <laughs> that's the that's the issue with that ending. I feel like I have an easier time getting to there from here than from there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. Ugh. Not really. It's the golden order fault for making like crappy because without death there is no life. Nothing makes anyone equal. No, that's not. That's not the case. The golden order is just a order. It's just any order. Like it doesn't matter. The problem that the Flame of Frenzy has is that life itself is suffering, and the Golden Order being going away or being replaced by a better order is not going to fix that. You're still th you're thinking too much in video game terms. You have to, if you think about what they represent rather than what they are in the video game, then you then you start seeing things differently. The Golden Order is what makes things crappy because order makes things crappy. But the Golden Order isn't even what makes things crappy. The problem that the Flame of Frenzy has isn't the Golden Order. It's life and birth and souls. It's the suffering that comes from existing, not from the Golden Order. Ugh. There we go. Is the Flame of Frenzy like the Crucible, then? No, weirdly enough. Uh, the very fact that you draw breath is the problem the Flame of Frenzy has. Yes, exactly. It's a very... It, it's similar to Buddhist ideology, Buddhist philosophy, in that li the problem is suffering. The problem... I mean, the cause of suffering is life. That's it. <laughs> and the problem of life is suffering, and, the, and, the, and, you, and their solution is you can stop suffering by stopping... Um, desire and that's their solution to the issue you stop desire and then you stop existing uh this is this is hindu and buddhist well the the buddhist thing is is compassion 
So, the, like, the Buddha chose not to ascend and become enlightened and stop reincarnating. He chose to, to help other people, and that's what made him the Buddha. But typically, in Hindu thought, when you become enlightened, you have stop, you stop having desires, and then your karma gets worked through, and then you can stop reincarnating. Uh, when you, and then you actually can just die. You don't go through samsara, you don't, you don't go through the reincarnation process. You don't have any more karma to work through. And so then you can just die. And that's the goal, to just be able to die. <laughs> I mean, I see it as life is horrible in Elden Ring because no one can die. Zero Jimmy. Like, that's not why life is horrible in Elden Ring. <laughs> life is horrible in Elden Ring because it's a metaphor for why life is horrible in general. Uh, l let me try and let me try and find a metaphor here. It's like the things that we're talking about—the fact that people can't die, and the fact that the rune of death was taken away. I see these as metaphors. Like, have you seen my videos? <laughs> I see these as metaphors for something else that's going on. And so you're looking at the metaphor and you're like, well, if, you know, if we could just, you know, put the metaphor away and not think of it as a metaphor, then we could like fix the in-game video gamey problems and then things would be okay. But you can't do that because they're metaphors. Yes, I'm pretty sure I watched your frame of frenzy one. I agree with it, but use but I'm using what the world I'm, I'm using what the word life can't exist without death and it would be depressing to live forever. Yes. But but for the flame of frenzy specifically, making people die wouldn't make them happy. Uh it it wouldn't stop the flame of frenzy from doing what it wants to do because the what the flame of frenzy wants to do essentially is stop all life, um, forever. Not not just a little bit of the suffering, sometimes, all of the suffering, all the time. Damn it. Damn it! <laughs> Let me learn your timings. Come on, do it again. Oh, that's a grab. Okay. Stop it! Let me learn your fucking timings. There we go. What level is your sword? It's at level 9? I should have come here earlier, but I forgot about it. I think it should be at level 6 or 7. Oh, somebody asked the, uh, what the difference between the Crucible was and the Flame of Frenzy, since they both... Uh, so the Crucible is when all life was blended together, and the Flame of Frenzy kind of wants to melt everything together into one thing. Uh, so they're asking what the difference is. Well, the Crucible is evolution, and the Crucible doesn't want to stay together. So the Crucible is about variety in life. 
You know, you have these things with evolutionary traits. You have tails and wings and, and vestigial horns, stuff like that. The Crucible is about change. It's about differences. And it's almost the exact opposite of the Flame of Frenzy. The Flame of Frenzy is be one thing all the time forever, where there's no differences and no fractures or births and souls. And the Crucible is more like things should be different all the time and stop being the same thing and grow wings and, and not be uniform. It's like almost exactly the opposite. Yes, it's overflowing life, yes. So then Kala's questline was probably cut because it interfered with the Flame of Frenzy. Frenzy is not about revenge, whereas Kala seemed like he wanted revenge. Huh. <laughs> that's that's a plausible reason for why it might be cut. I'm not sure if that is the reason. But if 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 I I saw in like an interview or a book that that was the reason, it would you know that's good. Good. Job. That's a, that's surprising. That could be the case. I think the Crucible is a metaphor for the Primordial Soup. Yep. Yep. That's what I've been saying about the Crucible from day one. It's evolution. It's the primeval state things started in. And also, it's not just a Crucible as in a molten, you know, pot that holds metal. It's a Crucible as in the other word of the the other term crucible a trial like life is a trial um and and a kind of survival of the fittest crucible a great ordeal Am I going to use the Moonlight Sword? No. Gross. I am not good. I am a Carrion Knight. I use my Carrion Longsword, the best looking sword in the game. Unless the DLC has something super cool, this is the, this is the move. Let me learn your timings. Come on, do it again. There you go. Do I know anything about Bloodborne endings, or are you just as confused as I am? I think I do, but I never made any Bloodborne content. Um, and I am not comfortable in trying to elaborate on it here, because Bloodborne is weird. Uh, but I will say that I think it's similar to Armored Core 6's themes. I think it shares similar themes as Armored Core 6. So if you go and watch my Armored Core 6 video and try and apply those same things to Bloodborne, you might, uh, uh, you might come up with some nice conclusions. I will probably eventually do a Bloodborne video.
will you make Bloodborne videos when the remake is announced? Yeah, that seems like it would be a good time if I ever was going to make a video on Bloodborne. I'll probably make one big one, and that'll be it. But, uh, I hope the remake is never announced. <laughs> Just a remaster? Okay, that I'll take a remaster. <laughs> I just don't want a, a blue point remake specifically. Although a blue point remake of Bloodborne, if they if they comes out, would probably gain me a lot of money. <laughs> because if I don't like it, if it came out and I don't like it and I can make a video on it, that's probably a big chunk of cash <laughs> for me. <laughs> to make a video on it. They decided they didn't like the weird alien. They knew better. They decided they knew. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think they probably would do a better job with Bloodborne than they did with the Demon Souls remake. Um, in fact, I'm positive that they would do a better job with Bloodborne than they did with the Demon Souls remake because uh, the architecture used in the Demon Souls remake is slightly gothic. It's a little gothic. It's close to what they should have used for Bloodborne. Um, so they already have some expertise with that, so if they just stuck with that, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a, a terrible change to the art style. Hey Red, I missed your Dragon's Dogma 2 streams to avoid spoilers. Did you have any new opinions on the game? I think I expressed most of my opinions on it pretty okay in my review. Um, the on the only opinion you might not have heard, but I thought I think I, I did a good job, is that I really think it's a remake, not a sequel, and it doesn't innovate, and it's not exact. It's not the Dragon's Dogma two that everybody was hoping that it would be, like the perfect version of Dragon's Dogma one. It's just a remake, and it has all of the same problems: uh, low enemy variety, you get strong too quickly. Um, Basically, any of the problems that you had, the story is worse, in my opinion. The story is worse. Uh, so any of the problems that that you had in one, you're gonna have for two, is is what my opinion for it is. More like a worse version of Dragon's Dogma 1. I wouldn't say I wouldn't go that far. I know that there's a lot of doomers in the Dragon's Dogma community that feel that way, but I, I'm not one of those people. I don't think it's worse than Dragon's Dogma 1. I think it's worse in some ways. And But it's also more polished. Damn. Come on. Come on. Did we finish Earth Defense Force 6? No, Derp uh, couldn't join me for for another stream today. So we're switching to this, and we'll do more Earth Defense Force 6 streams tomorrow, I believe. Did 
The Carrion Knight sort of such a missed opportunity could have been the catalyst to cast sorcery. Lore says it can't. I know, bro. I know. <laughs> Don't you think I know that? It doesn't. It, it's so infuriating. It's so infuriating. This is a, this is supposed to be a spell catalyst. Why isn't it a spell catalyst? If it was a spell catalyst, this would be the perfect weapon. This would be the perfect weapon. Instead of having an Ash of War, you know, it's what what its thing could be is is when you know press R two, you cast your spell. Are you doing a magic build? I'm doing a Carrion Knight build, Carrion Knight specifically. So basically, only the Carrion sorceries. I'm going to treat Dragon's Dogma like I treat Souls games. They give me, I love them all equally because they give me different things that the other can't. That's probably a good way to envision it. I'm not really a Dragon's Dogma 2 versus Dragon's Dogma 1 kind of fella. More, I'm more like Dragon's Dogma 2 and 1 versus the potential that exists for both of them. What I think they could be that neither one of them lived up to. And I'm sad <laughs> that they didn't. That's That's my... That's my thing. Did you pick up the hammer talisman before the first task from the Volcano Manor? Ah, uh, yes, the talisman. I should go get my rewards for the Volcano Manor quest line. That's a good idea. How do I go back up? I want to make sure that I've cleared the area. I need to go back up before I warp. The music... Oh yeah, the music in Dragon on Sogma 2, that's... I think that's almost as close to objective as possible worse than Dragon Sogma 1. The music in 2 is just got no pop. It's gotten no pop. And the best song is is the remix of uh, End of the Struggle <laughs> from the first game. And the first game's version was better, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, hello, Pissy Baby. Did I get the magic spork talent? No, but I wasn't going to use that shit anyway. That thing is not worth it. <laughs> if I really want it, I will... I will, you know, trade it to myself. I hope the DLC isn't Bitter Black Island. Why? Everybody loves Bitter Black Island. Are you a Bitter Black Island hater? Literally everyone in in the Dragon's Dogma community loves Bitter Black Island. Fisty Baby, do you like Bitter Black Island? <laughs> okay, let's go get our rewards first. I'd like it, but I don't want it copy-pasted. Uh... It depends on what you mean. Like, I don't literally want Bitter Black Island, you know. But if it was something like Bitter Black Island, <laughs> but improved. <laughs> again, the Bitter Black Island that could have been, like, a superior version of it. Um, then, yeah, I'll take it. I don't, I, I'm not sure I would want it if, like Dragon's Dogma 1, it's a remake of Bitter Black Island. Hello again. Hmm. Sharper than you. I was just holding on. There you go. Cheers for that. Better Black Island, exactly. I see that you've stayed the path of champions. This is your usual reward. 
Perhaps you are ready. I will I will go see your lord later. After I go do more things. Ah, I have the reward from later. Take it. Let us tread the path of the recusant together till we reach the miserable death that awaits us. Any kind of huge dungeon to crawl? Yeah, there were very few actual dungeons in Dragon's Dogma 2 that I liked. There wasn't any temple-like structure, which was something I was hoping for. It, the, the dungeons that did exist all were caves that maybe sometimes turned into temples. There was too much rock in cave in the dungeons, in my opinion. You're still alive, I see. Well, until we meet again. Didn't play Dragon's Dogma 2, it sounds like it has a lot of missed opportunities. That's basically, that's basically my opinion. Honestly, I was a little bit surprised at the positive reviews that everybody gave it in their review. Like, I, I saw everybody else's review. Um, I didn't watch all of them, obviously, but the ones I saw, um, they were all like, oh, great, great, 10 out of 10, no flaws, better than Elden Ring kind of reviews. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, no, come on. <laughs> it says low, it says low enemy variety. The story's kind of, kind of mid. It's too easy. There's no hard mode. There's one save file. Um, I, I actually got a lot of backlash in the early days of my review for being as critical as I was. Some time to myself. I haven't achieved anything at all thus far, even though I've dirtied my hands time and time again. I'm still yet to achieve anything. Perhaps I am a fool after all. No, it's worse than that. As things stand, I've given up on the path of revenge and sullied the name of my house. What an easy mark I must have been. How did it take me so long? There's just no end to my foolishness, is there? I am a fool after all. No, it's worse than that. What an easy one. Paid reviewers? No, I don't think there were any paid reviewers because I think I got the best tier of the review. You know, um, so I got it like 12 days early and I have the same, I think I have the same one as Fighting Cowboy has. Uh, and I think we got the best version and we didn't get paid. It, we just got early access. What were you more disappointed in, Tears of the Kingdom or Dragon's Dogma 2? Huh. <laughs> That's a strange philosophical question. Let me think about that. Both are good games. Both are very good games, I think. Um, disappointing. The word disappointing is what trips me up. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Here, here's the here's the answer. I'm more disappointed in Dragon's Dogma 2. Because Dragon's Dogma 2 led me to believe that it would be the game that was foretold. You know, I already knew what Dragon's Dogma 1 was. And I already had very... I already really liked Dragon's Dogma 1. And so... When I hear Dragon's Dogma 2, but this time Itsuno gets to complete his vision, this time Itsuno uh, doesn't have budget constraints and time constraints and he can actually just do what he wants, uh, I thought, oh, well, this is going to be the greatest game ever. Um, but then I just got Dragon's Dogma 1. Still a very good game, still very fun, but it really is just a remake of Dragon's Dogma 1. Uh, so the disappointment was greater in Dragon's Dogma. Whereas Breath of the Wild, I was always kind of teetering you know, I was always uh, being like, this is what I want, this is what I hope they'll do, but I don't know for sure that they'll do this. You know, I don't know that they're going to tell a traditionally told story. I don't know that they're going to add in real dungeons. And they didn't do those things, but that was always a question that was up in the air. 
in my mind, there was no question that Dragon's Dogma 2 was going to be the, the game that Dragon's Dogma 1 was meant to be. And so the disappointment is greater. Plus the weight was, yeah, it was immense. The weight between the games was huge. If we go back, I'm sure I rolled. I'm sure I was in the rolling animation <laughs> when that hit hit me. <laughs> I reject, I reject the idea that I got caught there. I, I rebuke you. Checked. I didn't. You didn't roll. I rebuke you too. <laughs> Rebuked. Dragon Sogma two made it realize I don't. Maybe I don't like Itsuna's vision, and I might prefer the guy that made Drark Arisen to make Dragon Sogma. That's true. That's that's a good point, because I do think that was made by somebody else. Luke says, I wish Tears of the Kingdom fixed all the issues with Breath of the Wild. The problem is they don't see them as issues. That's that's the problem. They don't think of them as issues, so as far as they're concerned, it's, there's nothing to fix. They didn't fix anything because they don't see them as a, as a problem. It's a feature. It's supposed to be that way. If anything, I'm kind of I'm kind of getting a little tired of um <laughs> You know, I, I get really excited for games when they seem to be giving me everything I want. I was excited for Tears of the Kingdom, I was excited for Dragon's Dogma. I guess even Monster Hunter Rise to some degree, but that wasn't you know, Rise I think was a more satisfying than either of them. Uh but then they end up being not what I wanted. And I'm like, well fuck. <laughs> I hyped up all of these people. Uh, because I was hyped up. <laughs> you hurt by Anuma's words, aren't you? Yes, I was hurt by Anuma's words. Yes. <laughs> I took offense to those words. Skull of the, uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree. Oh yeah, Shadow of the Earth Tree is going to give me everything I want. That one I can hype up all the time without fear. I just feel kind of bad that I ended up hyping Tears of the Kingdom and Dragon's Dogma so much before release. And then some people that follow me maybe got it and weren't as happy with it as I wanted them to be. I had no idea you could come up here like this. I had no clue. I had no clue. That does not seem right. Why did Tears of the Kingdom take five or six years to, to deliver? Um, because they were busy making Ultra Hand. Because <laughs> Ultra Hand was super hard to make. <laughs> they spent all the development time on that. We know that there's going to be another Zelda, but we don't know that there's going to be a more Dragon Song in the future. We do know for sure that there's going to be another Zelda, and we don't know for sure. But I do, I'm fairly confident that the success of Dragon's Dogma 2 will warrant a new game. 
I'm I'm perfectly confident that there will be a Dragon Song with three. If it had sold worse, then no. But uh, it sold well, so I think I think there will be. This level design is fucking stupid. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> At least three times already in the last ten minutes, I've been like, am I able to do that? And then the answer has been yes. Do you think the next Zelda will give you what I'm hoping for? I don't think it's guaranteed, but Nintendo does have a track record of doing what people want them to do when it comes to Zelda. Um, I believe... Which one came out first? Was it Wind Waker or Twilight Princess? Somebody remind me. It was Wind Waker and then Twilight Princess, right? Yeah, Wind Waker came out first. When Wind Waker came out, it didn't have as much sales as Nintendo wanted it to have. It didn't have it didn't have that um, selling power. And on release, they a lot of people criticized the cartoony art style. That that opinion's been reversed over the years, and people love Wind Waker now. But on release, there were a lot of people that didn't like it. They shit on the yeah, they shit on the sh cell shading. And then right after um, that, and the criticisms that they received from it, they made, um... They made Twilight Princess, which went in a completely new direction. It wasn't as cartoony. I wonder if this would be good for a big monster like this. And the same thing happened, um... Same thing happened after Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword was heavily criticized for being too linear, uh, being too story focused, having too many cutscenes, and railroading the player too much. And then what do they do? They come up with Breath of the Wild, which was like literally the opposite of all of those things. So I I view the Zelda team as people that really respond to fan feedback. What's happening? Its its head went in the ground. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. I earned that. That's stupid. <laughs> um, so they they did that. There's multiple examples of the Zelda team reversing course whenever they receive criticism. And Tears of the Kingdom received a lot of criticism from people, even people that liked Breath of the Wild. So it wasn't a old fan versus new fan thing. I think there's a very good chance that the next Zelda game focuses on story and has real dungeons, not these fake dungeons <laughs> that aren't really dungeons. story is the least of Skyward Sword. The story wasn't a problem in Skyward Sword at all. Skyward Sword has a great story. Am I the only one that hates fighting these magma worms? I hate fighting them in certain locations. 
<laughs> I don't just hate fighting them all the time, but I do hate fighting them in certain places. And your hopes are a linear story, linear dungeons, and an open world? Yes. My my hopes are we'll have a, a linear story, more traditionally told story, where you have to do things in certain orders, or sets of things in certain orders. Like, let's, let's assume you can do three dungeons, and you can do those three dungeons in any order, but you have to do those three dungeons before you do the next three, you know? So you have to do those three, and then you have access to four more after that. That's that's what I'm thinking they might do. Because they're not going to give up the open world. The open world has been too successful for them. They've pioneered a lot of open world stuff. People copy Breath of the Wild's open world formula. And Onuma has already said he doesn't want to go back. They're not giving up on the open world. People need to let that go. We're not going back to completely linear Zelda. We're not going back to Ocarina of Time. But uh, they might... They might do a linear story, and then the dungeons themselves might be linear. Because they have to be. They can't be semi-linear. They don't work. <laughs> I don't see why they don't, can't also do smaller games. That too. Um, I would like for them to bring back 2D Zeldas. Make a new 2D Zelda, for the love of God. How much of the Tears of the Kingdom player base take umbrage with the story slash dungeons? I think we're losing. No, I think we're winning. I think we're winning. Everybody. All of them. Uh, I, th I don't think you're looking at it correctly. Frankly, I think the likelihood of getting what we want next time around is very high. Everybody agrees with me. It would be hard-pressed. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone with an opinion that's not my opinion uh, when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom. Everybody's like, oh, okay, yeah. Even the people that like it are like, yes, it, it, you know, I love the game. It's a great game. But also, the things that you're saying is correct. You can't, you can't find that opinion. In fact, no, you can. You can find that opinion. There was one guy, I think, that's completely pro- Tears of the Kingdom. I think he's MHK YouTuber. But he's the only one I could find that's like completely no problems with Tears of the Kingdom's story and level design. Dungeons. Even Breath of the Wild people are anti-Tears of the Kingdom to some degree. Do you think they'll change the Zelda art style again? And if so, more like Wind Waker or more like Twilight Princess? Hmm. Just go into the Zelda subreddit to find people gushing about Tears of the Kingdom. Well, yeah, but I don't think that's... There are also criticisms in that subreddit. It's just that the, it's just that the criticisms have already been said. Like, it's been a long time. Everyone's already said their piece about what they don't like. The people that remain in the subreddit actively talking about it are the people that are talking about its positive qualities. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom lore videos kind of fizzled out in general, too. I, I'm in contact with a lot of Tears of the Kingdom lore people, they're all unhappy 
they're all very dissatisfied. And um, migrating, either migrating to Elden Ring's lore, or they are migrating to other things. Very large creators, like very large uh, YouTubers, are like, there ain't no views in this. Nobody cares. I don't even care. <laughs> this isn't like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> It's very funny, honestly. <laughs> Alright, I think I got all the stuff. Now let's fight the Godskin guy. Uh, gonna go heal first. Renatosser banished me from Discord and I didn't break the rules. You didn't break the rules, but your membership ran out. It is a members-only Discord. I miss Tatu in the Discord. No, you don't. <laughs> Come on. I really feel like that should have counted. Damn it. God damn it. <laughs> I think I can't parry that that attack with the hilt. That must not be parryable, because I think the timing on that I've done is right. God damn it. You know what? I'm going to learn this timing even if it kills me. Just so I don't ever have problems with this character ever again. on the fireballs. Ooh, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> Holy shit. I think some slams are parryable and others aren't. Oh, I'm fucked. I'm so screwed. <laughs> I hate this guy so much. <laughs> Let me learn your timings! No! <laughs> He's like, parry this, you filthy casual. Okay, those are parryable. I will say the beginning and middle of Tears of the Kingdom was fantastic. The beginning of Tears of the Kingdom, uh, like my first early 20 hours, I was so happy I thought I, I would. I thought it was my favorite Zelda game. I was deceived into thinking... I had the most fun I've ever had in my whole life. 
<laughs> Would it break the carrion night run if you made use of the mimic ashes? I it wouldn't break it, I just don't I typically don't use ashes in general. The, one, the way I feel about ashes is that I don't think the game is balanced around them, and I paid good money to play the game, and a lot of these ashes can solo the bosses, so I don't see why I would let them do it for me. I only use ashes for the duo bosses. I only use ashes for the gargoyle duel bosses. Well, I don't even use it for that. I use it. If I can find someone else to, to do it with me, then I'll do that. But the the other duo bosses, I found they're not they're, they're not that aggressive. They don't gank you. Like, one will stay back a lot of the time. And now that I learned how to parry, the Crucible Knight duo boss was just really fun. The Misbegotten Leon and the Crucible Knight, those were just very fun for me now that I can parry. <laughs> uh... Very enjoyable experience. I went back and saw your stellar braid playthrough. You missed a lot of exploration. I, I was just trying to get through it, but I did start to enjoy it a lot towards the end with the um, the gameplay is surprisingly solid brave tarnished what is your business here i'm afraid this is not a guest room what's that peculiar look upon your face goodness am i still a serpent oh how dreadful how dreadful indeed oh, forgive my distress i ought to be thanking you for treating me as usual despite this appearance Brave tarnished. This is my true form. I'm doing a Crystal Knight roleplay my run on my save that I'm getting ready for the new game plus Please job. Please forgive the deception. Do understand. This duplicity is my hey, hideous fox. Doing. Lady Tanith speaks no falsehoods. And the Volcano Manor is just as it seems. Lady Tanith is my mother. I am told I was born by the grace of a glorious king, that my mother cherishes this form I inhabit. I am proud of what I am, but people are cruel. If they saw my true form, they wouldn't speak to me. Are you planning on I playing Rebirth? So. No. I assume a guy. I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> but you are not like the rest. Is there a way to completely change your character in Dragon's Dogma 2 after creating it? Uh, yeah, you, you buy an Art of Metamorphosis in from the center of Vermont with Rift Crystals and you can change all of your appearance. But I don't think your name, I don't think you can change your name. My serpentine form and the name Zarias were secrets known only to Lady Tanith and I. Now I share the secrets with you as well. Please keep them safe from anyone else. My serpentine form and the name Zarias were secrets known only to Lady Tanith. You're a Tetsuya Nomura hater. I, share the secrets with I didn't think well. I was. Like, I didn't Please know who Tetsuya Nomura was. But I don't like Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't. I, dis, I actively dislike Kingdom Hearts 3 very much. And I don't like Rebirth. Um, and even remake a little bit. So I guess I am a Tetsuya Nomura hater. I don't like his style of, of storytelling at all. I don't like how he... N never mind, I'm not talking about this. I just don't like it. I just don't like Rebirth. We'll, we'll leave it at that. My serpentine form and the name Zarias were secrets known only to Lady Tanith and I. Now I share the secrets with you. What don't I like about Rebirth? Just the story. Just the story. That's the only thing I, I care. That's the only thing I, I don't like. If we're talking about gameplay or, or character interactions or character writing, I like all of those things. All those things are fine. I just don't like the story. I don't like the ending. 
I don't like the way he tells the story, and I don't like the point he's trying to make. <laughs> I don't like any of that, <laughs> but I like everything else. Gameplay is solid, good fun. Uh, I like the... the... The characters talking to each other. I like seeing them interact with each other. I like the music. Music's great. But I don't like the story, and we're not getting into it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. My serpentines were secrets, known only to Lady Tanith and I. Now I share the secrets, please keep them. Perhaps you are ready, our lord. I see, but do not to follow them in order to like a true. Won't you consider how our lord will? I see. But do. Hmm, and I can't talk to Tanith about it now. I've made a mistake. Won't you consider our Lord will? No. Yes. As it should be. Now I will transport you. I will literally join the Discord membership if I can get rid of a rebirth tea. I need to talk about it. All right. Farewell then. Here, here's here's the thing. Uh, I think Grimbones. Is, I don't know if he's in the chat, but Old Boy is in the chat. Old Boy finished Rebirth. He doesn't like it. Grimbones is another person that plays those games. We're going to see if he likes it. And then we're probably going to be in a big voice call, and we're going to talk about... We're probably just going to be shitting on the game. <laughs> whenever that happens. Uh, like we did with, with Remake. So, if you join the membership, if you get a membership and join the members-only Discord, and you want to be there for that... <laughs> Then I'm sure it'll be fun. Maybe I'll record it and put it like at an unlisted video uh, on the streaming channel. Won't you consider our Lord will... God damn it, bro. I see. Now I can't talk to her about the, the snake girl. I have fucked it up. I fucked up the order. I'll finish it off, but I hate some of the story changes. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like the story. I don't like how meta it is. I don't like how... how much of a commentary on its old version it is. <laughs> and I just I just don't like what happens. Like forget the meta and the commentary, I just don't like what happens. Um Oh it's you. Forgive me. Mm, I know I can trust you. I saw something. It entered the room if it took the fall. Does the volcano my but lady tan I realize that I shouldn't if you discover anything. Really? So there was a secret after all. Oh my. Lady Tanith, my own mother, has deceived me. Was I not? Born by the grace of a king. Okay, I can still do it. Can I talk to her about it now? She has dialogue I want to hear. Won't you consider our ah, Lord? I, see. I can't hear that dialogue anymore. Which ending am I going for? I will probably go with... Um, I probably won't finish the game, to be honest. Uh, or wait. But if I do, I'm going with Gold Mask. If I do. Maybe Ronnie, since I'm a carrion. Maybe I should do her ending. Is a Ronnie ending the best ending? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I think probably the best ending is is Gold Mask. I know a lot of people are Ronnie simps, but I think a lot of people don't even understand what her ending entails or what she wants. And she's definitely not a good person. She is a suspicious bitch. I was born inside this. It's a part of my birth, mother. You have my gratitude. 
Thanks to you, I am no longer afraid. I want to know how I was born and met Lady Tanith. One day, I hope to call her mother once again. I will one day. Won't you, our Lord? I, I hate see. you. Why? Why won't you talk to me about your daughter? Try dying to him? I don't think that's gonna work. I don't really get the Ronnie simping. I don't care that she's a doll, but she's not even an, an attractive doll. Okay, now you've got a bridge to fall. Get him. <laughs> get him, chat. Ronnie simps. Get, uh, get him. Go feral. Go <laughs> wild. <laughs> Looks like you're going to miss out on the new secret tonic of forgetfulness interaction. Is there a new one? I don't think there's a new one. I'm sure I've seen all of them. I have played all the Souls games for hundreds of hours and I have never understood anything about the lore or story. What would you recommend for someone like me to try and understand Elden Ring's lore? I don't think I, I have seen enough Elden Ring lore videos to give you a good recommendation about Elden Ring, but if you have played all of the Souls games for hundreds of hours, I highly recommend my video on Dark Souls' theme, because I think I do a, the best job of anyone that's ever done the job of explaining what Dark Souls is about and what all the things mean. Watch my video, uh... What is, what is my video called? <laughs> um, for Elden Ring, I don't recommend myself. I don't think... Uh, uh, one of the things that I've admitted is that I don't really get Elden Ring as well as I hoped I would. But for Dark Souls, look no further than my video called... Uh, let me see if I can find it. Let me, give me a second. It's called... The recurring theme of Dark Souls explained, and on the thumbnail it says everything rots. I think that that is, I think that's it. I've got the answer, <laughs> uh, and there are no better answers than that, in my opinion. Ran Ron is Trump-esque with his best job. Yes, <laughs> yes, I've done the, the best, the best job of anybody. <laughs> What if Miyazaki calls you specifically for your video and tells you that you're wrong? Then I will argue with Miyazaki, because he's wrong, <laughs> if he were to tell me that. I, it's, I honestly think that that's close to my best video. It might be the best thing I've ever made. I, I'm really proud of that video, and I'm happy that I, that I made it, and I'm happy with how it turned out. You're wrong, Rada. Well, what do you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd be like a liar.
what game in general do you think has the best story or storytelling? Well, it depends because I, I, when, when you, a lot of people will say that Dark Souls doesn't have a good story. It has good lore. And that's, that's how they'll, you know, they have a very narrow interpretation of what the word story means and what the word story should mean. Uh, and I don't agree with that assessment. I don't think that story is just cutscene style, direct narrative, dialogue between characters, God of War style thing. I think that, that Dark Souls does have a good story, as a fantastic story, and the storytelling that it that it engages in is not only valid and good, it's actually quite unique and innovative and and it's a story. It's good storytelling. That's my that's my belief. Um So, yeah, Dark Souls, I think, has a fantastic story. What is God of Freud's heroic trait? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> we don't talk about God of Roy in this, in this community. I need a million body videos to give me any clue about the story in Souls games. Yes, but you only need one Ratatoskr video <laughs> to give you all the answers. And it's the one I, I pointed out. Go watch that one. Truly my best work. <clears throat> maybe not. I actually think maybe my best work is that other video that I, where I talked about the difficulty argument. That one is very old, but I think it's a very good, well-structured video. Best story of a non-Souls game. Again, I have to I have to caveat with what I don't necessarily agree with what other people think a story is. But if you're going to put me on the spot, then I would say Shadow of the Colossus. I really liked that story. I really liked Shadow of the Colossus. Um, hello? Am I missing something? Oh, I couldn't, I didn't see that. I just did not, s thank you, ghost. Thank you, ghost, what the fuck? <laughs> I was very lost. This fucking thing has no openings. <laughs> I once realized, yes, Miyazaki was greatly influenced by Ueda's work. He he loves Ico. someone who found everything in Elden Ring. You have trouble navigating, which means everyone should be able to do it. 
because I did indeed find everything in Elden Ring. All of the things, first try, no sweat. I really like Nier Automata's story and story setting. Oh, yes, me too. Um, also, uh, Yoko Taro, who made Nier Automata, was also inspired by Eco. And Eco is the is the previous game to Shadow of the Colossus. So that's another reason why, why you might want to check Shadow of the Colossus out. Both Miyazaki and uh, Yoko Taro are fans of Ueda. Who made Eco and Shadow? Shadow's a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, yes. It's perfect. People hate on The Last Guardian. But it's a good game, too. I don't hate on The Last Guardian. I just don't think it's as good as the other ones. And, uh, Ueda has only really made those two games. I think. Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, and then he made Last Guardian. So, you know, people's expectations were very high, and, you know, the fact that it just wasn't as good as his previous two works, um, I just kind of looked down on The Last Guardian in comparison to the other two. So it's like, okay, it's good, but so what? You're, you're Fumito Oeda. You, you made those two games that, <laughs> that are so good, and that inspired, like, people like other geniuses, like Miyazaki and Yoko Taro, to start developing games. So when you don't perform to my expectations, uh, it's more noticeable. Why doesn't he make it more games? I don't know. He is cook he is making a game right now. He is in the process of making something new. Last Guardian went through development hell, which broke his relationship with Sony. Yes, he did quit in the middle of that and only stuck around to finish it as a consultant. Which might have had something to do with the game. Alright, Hoagie, I'll see you around. Oh, it's you. Um, I was an unwanted child. Born not of course. Something that can never be accepted. Not by men. No if I was going to waifu any character, it might be, it might be her. I know that you have done so much for me, but I wish to ask, kill me. I thought that I feared nothing, 
but free me from this accursed frame. Why? Why not? So but I wish kill me. I thought free me. No. In human form or snake form, you mean? In human form. <laughs> Rata equals four A confirmed. It's not confirmed. She's a humanoid. <laughs> she looks just like us. She's got that gamer posture, exactly. What's her name? Is it is it Freya? I don't remember her name. Raya? Raya, it's Raya. How do I get her to um uh... I wish kill me. I thought that free me. I don't want to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. I guess uh she'll go away once I kill the guy. Zoraya? Yes, there we go. I ain't killing shit. I didn't say I find her sexy. <laughs> you guys are mean. Stop being mean to Zoraya. She's just as good a waifu as any other. I, I won't hear no slander from doll lovers for Ronnie. <laughs> or rot or rot people. What the fuck? No. <laughs> Wow, leave Melania out of this. <laughs> Roderica. Yeah, Roderica's a good one as well. Isn't there a true form of the snake? So? So what? Prejudiced. That's what you are. You should be ashamed of yourself. Melina. <laughs> Melina has very little personality, and I read the Elden Ring manga in which she's kind of mean in, in the manga, but the art style is very nice and it, it looks just like Elden Ring's art. So, like, my head has imprinted the Melina in the game with the personality of the Melina from the, from the manga, so now I can't see Melina the same way anymore. She's, she's, she's that's, that's who she is now in my head. I really like this one enemy, like, because he's him. He's him. Look at this Chad. <laughs> Look at this bastard. <laughs> he's just such a... <laughs> he's so cool. <laughs> Look at it, He's doing too much. Just comes out of nowhere.
I think Merrick is not a good wife. We don't know what she looks like at all. We've never seen her face. And there's too much, like... There's, there's not Merica porn, really. Well, there might be. I don't know. But all of the Perica depictions I've seen in artwork have her very well endowed. And I'm like, she does not look like that. She's she's very thin in the in the um, in the game or just normal proportioned. So I'm like, I don't know if I trust people that that waifu Merica. Implying you search. I implied nothing of the sort. Nothing of the sort. That probably applies to every Elden Ring woman. No, because I can go... I can just be browsing Twitter. And I'll see a depiction of Roderica, and she'll look normal. She just looks like a normal, you know, girl failure, Roderica kind of character. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's Roderica. But then I see Marika, and literally every depiction I've seen of, of art of Marika has her with unrealistic proportions that she don't have. She don't have those proportions. <laughs> Since you're an expert, is there, is there more porn of Scaly Raya or Human Raya? I don't know, bro. <laughs> I'm not an expert, shut up. I can't talk with, I can't talk about anything to you guys. <laughs> Oh, I like this, I like this, uh, I like this, uh, snake character. Oh, he wants to fuck it! <laughs> That's the reaction I get when talking to you people. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, but do you? That's beside the point. That's <laughs> beside the point of what, of what we're talking about here. I love that Rykard left his home and came back years later with a strip dancer by his... <laughs> Understandable. Just fall from here? I don't know if I can just fall from here. Uh okay. We're good. We're good. No. That was a mistake.
then she goes and eats his innards. <laughs> I like the Tanith, even after like coming back with a Rikard. Uh didn't really like him until he became a snake thing. And then she's like, holy shit, that's so hot. <laughs> Like you shut up! I knew somebody was gonna. <laughs> Why do you think some areas are not allowing co-op? Because the game is not based around co-op. And some areas you can't walk back out from. So, like, you can get stuck there if you had co-op and you couldn't use torrent, for example. Because in some areas you need torrent to get in and out of places. Uh, or some other places. Yeah, the game's just not designed for co-op. Uh, or rather, it's poorly designed for co-op and it's mostly designed for single-player play. As I have often said. carry this thing, I would be stunned if you could. How would I rate their demigods in terms of personality? If you mean how cool their personality is, how enjoyable it is to be around their presence, uh, to see their little cutscene and their dialogue, then... I might put Godric pretty high up there. Godric might be number one. Godric's really cool. He's a very good introduction to the demigods. His dialogue is top tier. But you know what? No, maybe maybe Margit. Maybe Morgoth. Because Margit's introduction is actually super cool as well. By the way, I decided to play Armored Core 6 because of your videos about it. Nice. I hope you enjoy it. Or enjoyed it, if you've already beaten it. And you should look at my lore video explaining the endings. And what they mean. Because I think I am also correct about the Armored Core lore. Yeah, don't look at my video until you've completely finished it, because it's it's spoilers for all the endings. Is Armored Core 6 easy or hard? It is hard. But once you find out some strategies, they'll they'll it'll get easy. Like once you find out some weapons that work for you, uh, it can it can be easy. But I would say it's it's pretty hard. It's easier since nerfs? I didn't know that. I hadn't played it since launch. Did not know there were nerfs. Kind of sad. Uh, what am I doing? Temple, prison... Sea Spider got nerfed? That's a shame. Did they nerf Balteus? They better not have nerfed Balteus. No, that's unforgivable. Tell me they didn't nerf Balteus. No, come on! Not Balteus! He was perfect exactly how they... 
They nerfed Balteus and Ibis. What the fuck? No, no. I hate, I hate it, I hate it. I'm sure Miyazaki's not doing it. He, he would never. <laughs> That's bullshit. They didn't need nerfs. They were exactly where they should have been. Saki nerf her dawn. No, I don't believe it. That wasn't him. He would never. <laughs> Besides, I think they reversed the nerfs. He's, he, his meteors are still not one-shotting, but I think the rest of his kit went back to where... Well, maybe not back to where it was, but they buffed him after the nerf. Though I don't know to what degree. Alright, I guess I'll kill him now. I think this is the best gimmick boss fight of this type that they've ever done. It mixes the gimmick that they've been using since, you know, Demon Souls days. And it mixes it with uh, actual mechanical difficulty that the other ones just didn't have. Damn it.
forgot to pick up the Almernard mask. Uh, I guess I did. I don't remember where it's at. But it doesn't matter. Poor Dragon God. Yeah, but that's not the same spec. It's not the same gimmick. This is the Storm Veil... Not Storm Veil. Storm Ruler Yorm gimmick. It's different. I love him. <laughs> He's so cool. Too far. Also, the music, seriously good. The music of this boss fight is seriously top tier. So cool. Bum bum. Bum bum. Bum 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 bum. So good. So good. So if you guys have never seen my lore video on Rykard, I think you should. It's really cool. <laughs> Rykard is among my favorite bosses in the game. That's a cool fake out that he's got there. He's got a lot of cool fake outs. healing. I'm out of healing. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna kill him right now.
He's so cool. Such a cool guy. Okay, now I need the endurance to properly wield this. We will get rid of you for the moment. Maybe get you. No, still not good enough. Uh, you maybe? There we go. Oof, this staff has not been upgraded very well. I've actually never used the Blasphemous Blade. Never liked it. Good morning, Hume. I must not be remembering where Smithing Stone 7 and 8 bell bearing is, because I can't buy it. I thought it was here in the Zamor Ruins, but I've already been here, I guess, and gotten the thing. So maybe it's not here? I'm going to go there and check again, just in case. After Godskin Duo. I thought After Godskin Duo was the somber version. Yeah, I guess I did already get it here, so this is not it's not where it was. Oh well. Alright, let's go talk to Tanith. True then. You've defeated our Lord. No. I must thank you. Our Lord was yet weak. You have taught us that. Defeat is not the end. Our Lord is immortal and will one day rise again. Stronger. Until then, I must stay the path and do my part. I, will, I suggest I will miss these encounters. 
The champion who walks the tainted path shines all the more. I always was an admirer. is our code. Even he was prepared to meet a wretched end when he first took blasphemy unto his very flesh. But any road, the Volcano Manor is no more. Though we may yet fulfill an old promise. We hunted our own kind and took what was theirs. And with everything in hand, the time has come to rise against the Erd Tree. Oh, greater will, Hear my voice. I am the recusant Bernal, inheritor of my brother's will, and you will fall to my blade. We refuse to become your pawns. Consider this fair warning. Oh, great, I am the re we refuse. Who is his brother? I don't think they'd ever mentioned his brother apart from that one dialogue line. Unless he means Rikard as a brother, but it, he might actually have a brother. Now you've gone and killed Rikard. <laughs> you scheming little bastard. Cribes, you make this nonsense seem well, <laughs> less nonsensical. Perhaps a tarnished will be Elden Lord after all. But for now, this manor is finished. The demigod beast is slain, and Tanith has lost her head. A fine mess. But how else could it end? When Daddy Ambition's head over heels courting Lady Blasphemy. <laughs> well, here I am. Untethered once again. Goodbye, my friend. I can't remember how to get to the Volcano Manor without using the teleport under the Academy. <laughs> no, there's a path. You just you could just go to it. There's several what paths, actually. At least like three. All right, now... Is Alexander still over there? Yeah, he's still over there. But I've already talked to him, so it doesn't matter. Now I should go... Talk to Patches again. Wait, can you enter Volcano Manor proper from Rhea Lucaria? I thought you were confined to a specific part. You are confined to a specific part, but when you get out, you get out in Mount uh, Gelmir, and you can get to the volcano from that part.
What is it? I have no need of that. I must continue devouring my beloved lord. Oh, you... Allow me some time. Our lord's carcass is vast, and not easily consumed. Dear Rikard, please, find purchase within me. I wish to be your serpent, your family. One day, let us devour the gods together. Dear Rikard, please, I... I never ran into Rai and Altus. In order to run into Rai, you have to go through the elevator. So you need the two medallions, uh, and then you go up the elevator and she's right there at the beginning. Ah, oh, my lord. Rikard. Why is she so down bad? <laughs> Okay. I forget how to get to her. I don't remember. Maybe she's here. No, no! Ooh, that was close. That was close. Yeah, I think she's here. Wait, there's a Crucible Night fight if you visit Rykard's area? Uh, that's just to, if you kill Tanith. If you kill Tanith, the, the knight appears and then he gives you the Crucible Breath incantation. I suppose I knew in my heart of hearts how kind and uncompromising. I suppose how kind. I suppose how kind. Best girl. All right. I'm fairly certain I've done everything in the Altus Plateau. Pretty sure. I have scoured the lands. And I should probably go do 
this tower. I haven't done this tower yet. I'll be right back. I'm going to the bathroom. Alright, I'm back. Best wife who is Melania. No, no, no. I even like her daughter more. Uh, Millicent. Millicent's a good wife. Did I want? Yes, I washed my hands. Yes, I did. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I washed them all right. What do you make of Ronnie's ghost face being Melina? Yeah, that is a question. I... Don't... <laughs> okay. Okay, there's like several possibilities. Um, but I think that that's really something that we'll understand more in the DLC. But here's... 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 Here's one thing. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not Melina's face. I also thought that 
she looked like Melina early on. And I look at it, it's like, okay, that does kind of look like Melina. But one of the answers could be, maybe it's not Melina. Maybe it doesn't actually look like Melina. Rurikan, hello, nice to see you here. Finish the game. Wonderful. Wonderful. We should have a podcast soon. I've been wanting to talk about um, Dragon Sogma for a bit. Well, there's been an eight. How can I? There's a picture overlapping their face and fixed perfectly. I would have to see that picture. Um, and I do think it looks like Melina, the ghost face. But I'm not discounting the, the possibility that it's just not her. Number two. Melina and Ronnie were twins in the same way that, uh, you know, all the other twins were twins. You know, if you want Urukon, we could do the podcast today, if you have time later. If not, we should schedule it for tomorrow. Oh, you're sleep deprived? Sad. <laughs> Sad. Then we should definitely do it tomorrow. Or some other time. What's later? Uh, what's later for you? Tell me what time works for you, and... We'll do it. Ah! You can still podcast? Okay. Let me beg my wife. <laughs> She's about to kick me out of the house. I never got to do it anyway. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, I'm free today anytime. If uh, if she lets you <laughs> without too much trouble, then I can quit the stream and we can do it right away or, you know, later. And if that's too much trouble, we can just do it tomorrow.
This is a very cool boss, actually. I really like his moveset. I wish the sword you got from him um, was closer to the moveset that he has. Like, serious, it's seriously cool. Fuck. <laughs> Bro, what's happening? I... Do you have to, like, stand up and then do it? Okay, you posted the pic on the Discord? Okay, that that's pretty convincing. I will admit, that does that's pretty convincing. Yeah, that the Ronnie Melina. All right, fine. You know what? Yeah, that that's extremely convincing picture. And I was already on on that team early on, so I think I'll do my speculating, assuming that they do in fact look the same. The why might change, but they, I'm gonna speculate based on that from now on. How long was I planning on going for? I don't want to just jump in and swoop you away. No, no, you had, you definitely should. <laughs> swoop away, friend. Uh, if you're ready now, we can just quit and I will get some notes ready because I, I want to make a list so like 15 minutes This uh, stream short, fellas. Thanks for coming. Uh, I gotta prep for Burakan's podcast. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Katan. Goodbye, Crunchy. Katan, uh, Burakan, I'll see you soon. <laughs> later, fellas.